had the opportunity to write the speech of the head of mission, a French general, yeah, Javier de Marignac, for the celebration of 10 years, uh, uh, 1325 and 2010. Yeah? And I wrote in the speech yeah, that each member of ULEX or the uh, mission should be a general watchdog in his or her own capacity. Domestic violence and sexual crimes need to be prosecuted, and uh, a zero tolerance policy regarding sexual harassment, so among the staff or also staff outside, and the purchase of sexual services. Equally, I will not tolerate any discrimination on sexual grounds. So, in this old, relatively old general, father of five daughters, which he also emphasized in this. Uh, speech, so he knew a bit about gender as a minority in his own family. Uh, he was reading this out and promoting these points, and I think it was not censored, yeah? So we, I, we could, as we as I was involved in these induction trainings, yeah? and then we could use this uh, statement of the head of mission, general, French general, as a, an obligation, a promotion of obligation of all staff. They, and they could be then uh, made accountable, really sit and accountable, yeah, if they would not follow that. And as a zero tolerance policy regarding sexual harassment inside and outside the mission uh, is very important because we know where there are soldiers, there is also prostitution. Yeah. And it is, uh, it is forbidden that they, we, we know what happens with uh, some UN uh, peacekeepers. Uh, have been doing and uh, are doing. But this I found a very useful strategy on this European level um, to promote this WPS agenda and bringing it into the mouth of those who are uh, in a position of authority. Well, let's say maybe one agenda and many strategies, because I think one of the advantages of Agendas like the CEDO way before and afterwards to 1325 and others was they have been negotiated not only by people, women from the global north, they have been criticized and also very much been developed by people from the global south. So this is a common ground we share and I think it's very important in order to work together and we have sort of a global responsibility too. Of course we are talking about certain conflict areas but this is our planet and we are interlinked. So I think it's important to have this policy agreement on a global level and then of course we need, as we already heard, different strategies for different levels, for different stages, in short term and long term perspectives. There we really have to go into the detail and develop very, very tailored approaches. Women who participate in peace talks do not necessarily or automatically represent women's political interests. So being a woman is not an agenda. This is what I mean in terms of equality. Um, concerning women's participation, we would need to ask uh, questions like, which women? Because if I go to the biggest women's organization in a country, it's likely a very uh, privileged one, maybe, or just uh, with a certain from a certain tribe, from a certain ethnic group. Uh, how do we find them? Which organizations, women's organizations, do we work with? Those who fit our needs as donors? Or do we have also mechanisms to work with grassroots to have their uh, point of view and, of course, role in the view? I'm really, really, I, I will never <laughs> cease to fight for women's empowerment because it's still necessary. But of course, all those other concepts, which come from very good research now, are important. And we need to be able to have them simultaneously. Simultaneously. <laughs> which is another challenge, but uh, yeah, that's what it's about. You know, this women's issue that you, you hear talked about, um, which I don't, don't really know what that, that means, um, can be put on hold because the most important thing is actually just getting a peace agreement. And we see this in Afghanistan at the moment. Um, with the language around uh, negotiating with the Taliban. And there's actually an interesting movement on social media around a hashtag uh, red line, the red line or something, um, along this about this is, this is not, it's not unnegotiable. Women's issues 
women's issues, bringing women into um, peace processes, putting women's rights on hold and somehow to negotiate with, with the bad guy, um, the Taliban in this case, is okay and we'll deal with this everything else later because surely this is better, peace is better than no peace for everybody, including for women, which in fact is, is empirically untrue that actually uh, more women are killed because of issues of domestic violence um, after conflict formally ceases um, rather than in, in conflict. Um, this is a broad statistic rather than, I don't want to, uh, every conflict is different and every situation is different, but I'll have with, with one more question, this is basically referring to the, to the topic of the, the name of the, of the whole event. Is there one agenda or many? Mm -hmm. Because kind of in the discussion we have, we found okay, there's a very different kind of language obviously needed if you're kind of in this diplomatic kind of, of realm, if we are engaging with WPS on a more academic level, or if we are doing kind of project implementation on the ground in, in, in development work in post-conflict settings. So how is your experience in, on these kind of different levels? And how could you make fit or in kind of your experience this agenda in these different kinds of, of, of surroundings and contexts? Or is it actually various or different agendas we're talking about? Everyone wants to start. Yeah, it's a, that's a difficult question. <laughs> it's tricky, but I think we actually need many agendas because the aim is a little bit different. I think on an international level where an international community comes together and 193 states have to sort of agree on 15 states in security council, but a huge community of states has to agree on a common framework. And I think what the aim at the international level is, is creating accountability. Basically, the international community is here to tell you, you need to include more women and you need them for sustainable peace. And if you don't do this, we will be here to remind you of this. Whereas on a local level, that's not so much what they need. What they need there is to create something more of local ownership. You know, this is their project. In the background, of course, they have this international framework, but I think on a local level or on a national level, we need something a lot more specific. You're dealing with very specific problems that might be completely different from the conflicts that the international community has learned from in the past 20 years. And so I think there, there needs to be many agendas. I mean, there needs to be many solutions, I guess. Maybe we can have like the, the one big agenda with the one goal of, you know, creating gender equality and having sustainable peace, but on a national level, I think the solutions need to be a little bit different. Well, definitely the, the, the aim is very different in different uh, communities, the context is different, the conflict is different, but I was just also thinking that in, at, at the local level, of course they have the national plan of actions at the local level, but also sometimes it can be very counterproductive if an agent is coming from outside. In cases of countries like mine, Iran is seen as, a, as an aggression towards the national values, towards the national practices or traditions, and uh, a goal of westernization of a whole country rather than something to deal with conflicts and to deal with common situations, for example. So um, following that, I, I also, there should be many agendas, not only for the international organizations, but also the local actors themselves should be uh, should, should be given that the when we talk on civil society participation, I think what is lacking there is giving not just the freedom for uh, the civil society likes in a country like mine, but, but imagine if these civil society actors on the ground could be given the resources and organizations like they did in the past. Because these big organizations are what I see, they are lacking the, uh, they are missing on the interconnectedness of all these topics all that, that covers a whole gender perspective in a complex uh, situation. But also they are, uh, they're lacking on that and they are exhausting their resources on something that is not at the end really productive because their actors are usually the same actors. They are. Uh, I think saturated with the situation that they have at hand. At so many levels, we have the 
people know of the reports of sexual abuses of these international organizations, leaders of the conflict zones. So they are acting on one agenda without realizing the, the needs of the local agendas and neglecting it because they say, okay, we have national action plans. So we have that, we don't need to deal with this. We follow the agenda principles, like the other as you said, to remind you of this is what you need to know to do to, 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 to include women. So uh, in many agendas are needed, but also giving the resources and strengthening the other uh, the other actors on the ground level is actually more important than focusing on one major agenda or main agendas, realizing that these actors are uh, who would essentially and eventually make the difference on the field and bring about the peace that is needed and fitting into their society. 